Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what I've been working on this week. Last week we did the Quilt As You Go Hexi Log Cabins. Made one with you, made one to practice on. These are the ones that are going to go for underneath my sewing machine and my sewing machine mat. And then over on my Patreon page, we did the partial seam hexagons. What I wanted to do is I wanted to get rid of this little bit that just drove me crazy. It's only in that one spot and it's nowhere else. And as you can see on this one, it swirls around nicely by using that partial seam. Now during my sale, the bowl cozies were the most popular item. I had several requests afterwards to see if there was any left. So I went ahead and I made a bunch for the shop. I made 14 of them. I did these a little bit different in the shop this time. If you guys shop on Etsy all the time, you'll have seen this before, but it was new to me to use, not to purchase items. But I listed them all under one listing. So there's a little selection box that you can choose based on what the main fabric is. It's really self-explanatory on there. If you've done it before, you could tell. Now, some of these have already sold because I showed them to my patrons and I've also put them up in my community tab here on YouTube. We have Pepsi with the blue fabric, Dragonfly with some brown, Puppy Prince, brown of course. Have these fun dogs. Now remember these are reversible so you can use them however you like. Small sunflowers, large sunflowers, hearts. I love this rooster fabric, all fun colors. Kitchen one was very popular, so I made another one of those. We have the peach paisley. Probably should have showed you the back of these too. Harry Potter. I went with the golden snitch, so there's a nice yellow on the back. This is a Harry Potter with the castle. This pretty blue. The blue goes really well with this blue. I like it. And I've got the pink and white flowers. Pink on the back. And the campers with silver gray on the back. So there's 14 of them. If anyone's interested, there's a link down below for my Etsy shop. I'm going to do multiple listings, multiple items in one listing as much as possible now. That way, when you pull up my Etsy shop, you don't see 14 listings of bowls that you got to scroll through to get to anything else. If I could put them all under one or two or three listings, and then you can just choose from them based on the picture. We're only allowed 10 pictures, so I didn't get to show all the backs of these. But I figured the main fabric was the most important anyways. Next time, I'll put them in separate listings so that I can show more pictures of each item. Somehow I managed to have Sunday as a day off. I thought, wow, I woke up and I didn't have to do a video. I didn't have to make anything specifically for any purpose. So I decided to just play a little. I took this one, it was already glued onto the gridded interfacing. So I went ahead and I just got this stitched up. Got I did all my seams open this time. I like that design too. So I think a bunch of white squares with just some bright colorful fabric to border it, that would make a nice little quilt too. This was already fused all down. It, it was 16 inches to start with. It's now 12 and a half by 12 and a half. I really wasn't sure what I was gonna do with this one. I was gonna make pillows with the other one. So they're still in my, you've got a few minutes, you can get something to do work on basket. So I decided I just pulled this one out and I think I'm gonna end up cutting it. And I think I have a different project in mind for this one. It's not quite big enough for a tote bag. And I didn't want to, I could easily just add more squares onto it and make it larger. But I have a different idea that I think might work nicely for this bit of fabric. I really do like the back of it. It reminds me of some type of a primary school, like a kindergarten, first, second grade type thing that you'd see. 
I had to trim open all of the bits so I have lots of little bits of fabric that I just need to clean off of there. And of course, one seam just snuck by on me and didn't stay pressed open. When you're going through the machine, sometimes, you know, the I have where my bobbin case is, it has a little bit of a ridge, so then it kicks it up and stuff like that, and I just didn't catch that one. It's not that it matters, it's just more of a grr, that one little bit that just looks different. I also finished stitching down all of the top scrappy cards for my note cards. I also put all the little bits of double-sided tape on. I was chatting with my daughter and I didn't want to start the video when I knew we were going to be chatting back and forth. So I didn't want to be sitting here and leaving her hanging for like 30 minutes, 20 minutes or whatever while I did the video. So I thought it was a good time to just go ahead and put all the little tape down. And since those scrappy bits are going to be ready to be turned into cards, I had to go ahead and cut some more supplies for making cards because I'd used them all. So here is my envelopes. I went ahead and I cut them to size and then I put them through the little envelope maker. So it's got the crease line in them and all the little cuts out. And then these are the actual cards. I don't pre-fold those right away. I made all the little linings, a bunch of those. And then these are all the pieces of cardboard. I don't need them right now. There are all these little pieces that go on the back of here. But since I had everything out and I was cutting it anyways, I went ahead and cut all of that too. I find it much easier just to take a few moments or an hour or two at the end of the day on one of my days that either I finish early or I had the day off and just go ahead and prepare a whole bunch of things ahead instead of like, okay, I'm gonna make 20 cards. Oh, well, and I gotta cut this and I gotta cut that. This way, the only thing I have to worry about is making that scrappy bit and all of the rest parts of the cards and the envelopes are ready to go. Now, those of you that have been here with me for a bit, when we made the bowl cozies as a tutorial, as you trim off the darts, you get this little bit of a triangle piece. Now, last time I turned it into a mug rug and one of you guys actually purchased it from my shop. So this time I thought I would go ahead and play with it a little bit more. These are actually my leftover pieces. I'm gonna show you what I did with them in a second. I put them down onto a lightweight interfacing because if you get really close, you can kind of see the interfacing right there. So these triangles are just sitting next to each other the best I could. They're not actually sewn individually it's more like of an applique process although i just did a whole bunch of matchbox quilting on top of them and then i put the ones that were the novelty parts of it from one side of the bowl onto a black piece of fabric and then i put the other pieces that were just the semi-solids onto a white background and this was just a little bit that i had left over as i was piecing everything together on the interfacing so i have these three pieces left over that i need to do something with but this is what I turned them into. This is the first pouch. I thought this fabric was, it's a green with a lightish bluish green and dark green kind of paint brushes that go through it. So I went ahead and used the black on that. So I thought it would highlight, I thought it would highlight against that color really good. So you gotta remember that this is all just raw edge applique stitched down onto this. And then I pieced it. This whole black piece isn't just sitting on top of the green. I did piece it like that. And I put a black zipper and then some of this fabric inside. But what I wanted to try to do with these pouches, now this one just has a lightweight interfacing. It's a very soft sided pouch but I wanted to try this technique. I've seen it in just a couple places. I don't know if it's very popular yet, or maybe it's something that was a while ago and people just aren't doing it right now, but Crafty Gemini recently did one and I think she used leather and Minky Kim has done a few on Instagram. So one of the ways that I saw someone do it, and I don't know if it was either of those, but they have this bit of a bottom on it. So you have a pouch that looks kind of flat, but it has this little bit of a, I don't even know what to call these. I was calling it folded bottom pouches when I was searching on YouTube. So if anyone happens to know a video for these or what they're actually called, so you can actually put things in it and the bottom will open up. Kind of reminds me of like Capri Sun and certain chip bags and snack bags and stuff. So they will sit up like that when you put things in it but it also folds down nice and flat. So I thought that was just kind of neat, but the one I really fell in love with is this one. 
So it has this little bit where you can see the bottom is like brought up and sewn into there. So I put the semi-solids on this. I like this blue fabric with the leaves like, or the berries. I always think of them maybe as like leaves. Black zipper again, and this time it has a white lining. But this one, it has a nice flat bottom. It doesn't suck in or anything. I mean, you can fold it to store it, of course. But this one sits up nicely also. So you can easily put your cosmetics in there or whatever it is that you're doing. I always think of little project bags. So you could put a little bit of a small, you can easily put an EPP project in here or you could put some type of embroidery or small cross stitch or I think I could even get a, a small hat project in there. As long as you're not using one of those big red heart skeins of yarn because that's obviously not going to fit in there. But I thought that was just a really neat thing. I just really like the way it's done. You see this a lot when you buy bags at like the Dollar Tree or even like Walmart or wherever, and there's no lining in it. Because I said those two videos that I saw, one was an Instagram video and one was Crafty Gemini. She had leather and there was no lining to it, but I wanted to have a lining in my bag. So I had to figure out just how to do it. It wasn't too difficult. I'd like to try it a couple different times just to pressing it and getting everything set in just the right exact spot. Maybe get it so it has a little bit bigger of a bottom to it, although I do like it for this size pouch. It's pretty good. So this is what kept me busy this week. Doing the bulk hosies, while they're a, not a difficult project, they do take a bit of time to work through the entire process. It's really simple sewing and everything, but as I said, it does just take a little bit of time. And when you do 14 of them, it takes a lot longer than if you just do one or two. So this week coming up, I'm going to spend most of my Monday through Friday part of the week working on videos and getting them all set. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit ahead. That has always been my goal. We've talked about this before on how I wanted to be six months ahead. I would like to just have a month of videos ahead at this point so that I'm always getting myself a month ahead and then we'll see what happens after that. It's always nice when you get a month ahead because every time I do, I always seem to have some situation that comes up. So I'm not complaining because it's always perfect timing that I have all these videos. So when it comes to a time that I can't make videos or there's something else going on that takes precedence, then it's always nice to know that I don't have to run home. I can help my kids when they were moving or I can supervise my kids when they were moving because, you know, they didn't need my actual help. I was just there to keep them company. Or I can take care of other things or work out in the yard and I know I don't have to rush inside and say, I got to get a video done. I got to get a video done. Because sometimes Thursday afternoon, I'm still working on Friday's video, which I don't think is a really good thing. It's very stressful and I don't know that you guys will notice in the video, but I notice in the video when it's not done in a nice, relaxed manner where I feel like I'm trying to just rush through everything. So that's my plans for the week. Plus, I have a few more ideas that I need to work on. I need to work on my cards. I need to work on this. These are all set. These, I don't know. Maybe I'll just turn these into little small coin pouches or something. The bowls, cozies are all in the shop. These both will go in the shop too. I just haven't put them in there yet. Uh, this is Monday morning, so by the time you see this on Wednesday, they may be in the shop or they might take another couple days. After I take care of this video and I get it all edited, today is grocery shopping day. I haven't been shopping in a month, so I need to really go and spend all afternoon taking care of the groceries and then coming home and putting them all away. Am I the only one that it seems it takes longer to put away the groceries than it sometimes does to buy the groceries? I usually put on an audiobook and just go about what I'm doing, and when it's done, it's done. Rob always liked to take every little item out of the grocery bag and put it away. So he would like, I he would go and get, you know, the refrigerator stuff and the freezer stuff. Then he'd like find all the cat food and put the cat food away. He'd find all the crackers, put the crackers away. Me, I like to, yes, put away all the refrigerator and freezer stuff. Then I like to pile everything up on the counters and I section it all off. This goes in the pantry. This goes here. This goes down the hall to the bathrooms or whatever. And then I put it all away. 
Is it faster? Probably not. Is it better? No, but it's better for me. We all have our own way of doing things. So our code word today is, let's see, we talked about grocery shopping and we've got this fabric staring me in the face. So our code word today is going to be kitchen. So let me know what you do in your kitchen. Do you put your groceries away one by one or do you pile them all up on the counter and then put them away in groups? I hope you all are having a great week. We are coming up into June. I think May has been a very, very long month for me. This month has really gone by slowly. I don't know why, I never really want time to go speeding by anyways. So a nice long month is okay with me. So if everyone is having a great week, hope your weather is gorgeous. See you guys next time. Bye.